yeah hey guys welcome to my youtube channel and this video and guys in this video i'm just continuing with the concept of uh, network certification which is uh, comptia volume 1 and lesson 5 part 2 uh, which is uh, network implementation so i have covered the uh, three topics in part 1 and i already uploaded that video and it was a very huge or uh, long uh, chapter so i try to conclude in two videos so in this video i will be talking about the rest of part so guys if you find it as helpful please don't forget to subscribe the channel and comment on this video share this video like this video and uh, as you can i will tell you here so these are the topics in this video i'm going to cover the first one is uh, topic d which is token ring networks and topic e is uh, fiber distribution data interface uh, FDDI networks and the third one is topic F which is wireless technology and standards so the rest of three already I have I mean uh, uh, spoken about my previous uh, in my previous video so guys if you find this you can subscribe the channel and you can go through all the videos so as you can see this is a fifth uh, lesson so I have uploaded already first second third and fourth chapters or you can say the lessons step by step so let me begin with the very first one which is token d uh, topic d token ring token ring network so guys uh, in previous uh, topics uh, we have learned about the common type of networking technology like ethernet and all however there are other network implementation that you might encounter one of which is token ring okay so in this we will understand about it so first of all guys token ring is standard so we have to uh, learn about token ring standards what are those things so there are uh, there are two uh, token ring standard that are very similar IBM token ring and IEEE 802.5 so there are two types of uh, you can say standards so we have to go through the characteristics of both the standard so if we talk about transmission speed of IBM and uh, IEEE 800 2.5 so it is 4 to 16 mbps and it is 4 to 16 mbps similar speed okay and physical topology this one is a uh, star topology ibm token ring but uh, here no not a specified or no specific topology in term of number of nodes per ring so it is uh, like stp 260 and utp 72 i have already spoken about what is stp and utp in previous video and here it is 250 uh, next one is guys media type okay so media type it can uh, it, it can support stp utp uh, listed as category 2 or 3 cable and here no specification signaling it uses base wind and it, it is also uses base wind and we, we talk about access method token ring uh, token passing and this is also token passing and encoding if we talk about the encoding characteristic now that is differential manchester and this is also differential manchester and so there are couple of similarities between both the standard but somewhere that there will be a little bit uh, difference also so I will move to the next one and uh, if you talk about uh, history of this one so IBM developed token ring in 1970s and IEEE 802.5 standard was developed in 1980s so this is older little one as compared to uh, IEEE and these two standards vary so slightly so they, uh, they shouldn't ha even be considered uh, different so uh, as i told you there is not uh, very much difference between both them and the difference between ID ibm standards and uh, ieee is that the ibm standard specifies a physical topology and media type and 802.5 standard doesn't okay this is the difference you can say the main difference if you talk about the difference between a uh, token ring and ieee 802.5 token ring in standard now token status here we will understand about the token status so there are four states that a token can be in while on the network so first one uh, available state okay there is no data and the token can be used by any node so this is the first step second one capture state captured state the, the, the token contains valid data is and is passed to is, and is passed by the node until it reaches to destination okay this is the second and third one is acknowledged state and uh, fourth one will be 
received a state so let me show you one graphic here you will understand better so guys this is the first one okay this is available for all the nodes on the network or throughout the topology and this computer caught that it has to send some data so it got captured now it is moving to that particular destination for example this is your destination or this is your destination so uh, it will keep moving until it reaches to that particular uh, destination so this this is acknowledged okay and this one is reserved so this is the state of uh, token ring throughout that entire transmission now that is what i was talking about available first one second one is captured third one is acknowledged and fourth one is reserved okay so you can read here little bit about available there is no data in the payload and token can be captured by any node and there is ballot data when it is captured and notification either positive acknowledgement or ne negative acknowledgement sent from receiving node so and the priority system for example what does it mean this reserved here it is a priority for example that token is prioritized for the system so first I this system will receive that data now multi station access unit which is also known as msaus so the definition of this very simple guys ibm token ring network station are directly connected to multi station access units this is also known as msaus and msaus can be wired together to form one large ring using patch channel uh, patch, patch cables and lobe cables for connectors connections so i will show you here it is better it will give you the better understanding so this is a multi station access unit basically here you can see this is one one you can say this one is one unit and this side is one unit but both connected through one more cable here that is known as multi station access unit now i will move to uh, you can see a little bit more thing here uh, this is multi station access unit also includes bypass relay for removing nodes from the ring the msaus is responsible for connecting the ring in and ring out connections from each other so guys you can read little bit more things here from so i'm just going through uh, next one so token ring failure recovery if that token is failed what will happen here token ring network take on a star configuration when a device is turned off or disconnected from a network what will happen if, if that token is failed in this in this situation the msau simply bypass the disconnected devices how when a device is online but unresponsive the msau keeps the connection live but breaks the ring because the device isn't passing data how it happens here this is what i was talking about so we have one this is a situ situation for example this 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 one is down now what will happen here so this msa u device bypass will, uh, will bypass that uh, traffic or consider this is disconnected b conning guys b conning is what so b conning is a process used to ensure that all system on a ring are responsive when a ring is established each device sends a beacon every 7 seconds okay so this is a just continuous response about the status of the or state of the devices on the ring that is known as beaconing if a station doesn't get the uh, beacon signal from its neighbor it notifies the network that the node is down so what is as a result traffic is considered to loop back around the failed node so this is what situation here now uh, for example what is happening here this system got shut down and this is not getting any response from this side so this uh, pc or this node will consider this path is down and this system is down so it will resend that uh, that data back to uh, in in uh, this uh, this direction opposite direction so oh, same will happen from this side also this so this may generate kind of uh, you can say loop okay but this is what the process will take in this case if this one uh, note is down in this beaconing next one is guys topic d uh, topic e fiber distributed data interface networks so what what in this in the previous topic you looked at token ring network and how they are used another uh, type of 
network topology that use ring topologies fiber distribution data interface in this topic we will understand so first of all we should understand what is FDDI so FDDI is a networking technology that uses dual fiber ring operation at 100 Mbps although FDDI uses dual ring fire uh, fiber ring only one ring carries data under normal condition the second rings either idle or in control or it controls the rest of things uh, basically it will be on idle state only and under cert, uh, certain circum circumstances if the second ring is not needed for backup it can also carry data exceeding capacity of 200 mbps so the second also can be used for example this is example fddi so here we have two rings okay so one ring is i mean this one cable is taking or carrying the data as of now but if required the second can also be uh, used to uh, take the data so as of now it was 100 mbps if we use both then it could be 200 also 200 mbps so it has it will have uh, very good speed and if you are if only one uh, ring is required so then the second uh, uh, buyer or ring will be in idle state so this is what fiber distributed data interface network we have now dual ring so guys the dual ring configuration is important for two reasons first FDDI ring doesn't have a device okay so it, it, it will not be having any device just like MSAU we had uh, device such as MSAU to remove stations when they are turned off okay so the basic function of MSAU is removing the stations if they are so down or off second reason why it is uh, dual ring is uh, important Fiber transceivers can't be configured to re uh, reverse. There is re uh, there is receive hardware and transmit hardware. Having two-way data movement on the same cable is simple with copper media, but it's more complex with fiber and requires two media paths, one for each direction. So guys, next one is FTDI connection devices. What, what are the devices we required here? So first one is nodes are connected to FTDI network in two ways. First one is in dual attest station, which is known as DAS node. I mean DAS and the second one is nodes are connected directly to both primary and secondary ring. So in this condition. Now the second one is in single attached station, which, which, uh, which is SAS nodes are connected to a connectors which is connected to both rings I will show you here what does it mean so this is what I'm talking about so this one is uh, all all the nodes are connected through two cables okay and here this side single this PC is connected through single cable but we have one switch here and this PC is also connected through single cable so that is known as single attached station and this one is uh, dual attached stations so we required this device in this and if we talk about single attached station here the connector the concentrated gives the SAS access to the primary ring so here the primary ring will be uh, giving access to this SAS this is advantages because when a SAS node is removed or turned off the concentrator simply skip the node so this will be skipping if any goes down in SAS and what will happen if FDDI failure so how it will be recovered so guys DAS nodes provides fault tolerance measures that detects loss of connectivity and then loop back the signals a process known as auto reconfiguration now we will see little more in this by uh, by looping back the signal a node actually reconfigure a network into single ring for, ex for SAS devices the concentrator provides fault tolerance through isolation if a SAS device fails it isolate the con uh, concentrator I will show you here what does it mean so this is what I'm talking about FDDI failure recovery so what will happen for example here one is down okay one cable is down so, so what will happen so the second cable will automatically configured and it will take charge you can say like this it is very easy to understand So this is in a DAS situation. Okay, the secondary cable will take the in charge. 
now what will happen here here if this fails so it will go on isolation mode this is what we have in uh, recovery concept in FDDI failure next one is guys topic F in this wireless technology and standards okay so we will understand in this this topic so first of all when to use wireless technology we should be very careful about and we should have the clear idea when we should use wireless technology so guys first one is wireless network tie which is infrared second one is radio and microwave so if we talk about uh, infrared when to use infrared networks use low frequency light waves to transmit and receive data from individual nodes okay so infrared network are ideal for installation where a small area need to be covered and there are no obstacles in the transmission path so in a room you can say your living room you can use like this in a very small area next one is radio network so radio networks use high frequency radio waves to transmit and receive the data from individual node and radio networks are ideal for installation where large area need to be covered and obstacles exist in the transmission path and microwave microwave networks are highly frequency radio waves to send and receive data from nodes or from satellite trans, uh, transponders microwave network are ideal for installation where large area need to be covered and obstacle exist in the transmission path so you can decide what is your requirement and you go you can go for the wireless network types in that in this condition so next one we have what is WAP which is also known as wireless access point so guys wireless access point is a wireless connectivity device that enables multiple wireless nodes to communicate with each other with other networks okay the WPA transfer the broadcast signal to another WPA or onto the network medium in this way wireless and wired networks can coexist in the same environment so the meaning is very simple here this is my wired network you can say and this is my wireless wireless networks but <coughs> still I am connected <coughs> with all the nodes here this is what WAP provides us <coughs> next one is guys the IEEE standards IEEE 802.11 standards so this 802.11 standard is a family of specification developed by the IEEE for wireless LAN technologies in previous video I had explained about 800 2 point X in that 3 5 and 2 that was for LAN or Ethernet uh, media to uh, they had uh, given certain specification now I'm talking about wireless so in that there is a specification we had to follow this technology had to fo follow so 802.11 defines the access method as CSMA slash CA for reliability it's a specific spread spectrum radio devices in 2.4 uh, gigahertz band it provides for both FHSS and DSS uh, DSS so let me show you one figure not figure this little bit more example here so that you will understand what does it mean these things so guys uh, if, we s if we see here there are uh, certain modes of or you can say there are two component of uh, 802 11 standard infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode so we will understand this what does it mean so infrastructure mode is what infrastructure mode utilizes one or more WPA to connect workstation okay to the cable backbone or infrastructure mode wireless network use either the basic service BSS or extended service set ESS protocols I will explain about all those things in coming slides and ad hoc means what ad hoc node utilizes peer-to-peer -peer configuration in which each wireless workstation talk like uh, directly to another workstation so here we have two laptop only and those will be communicating with each other that is known as ad hoc but here infrastructure mode we can use multiple uh, wireless access points now this is what basic service set just now I told you here so a group of wireless workstation and access point are called basic service set and uh, 
BSS can effectively extend uh, the distance between wireless endpoints by forwarding signals through WPA. All devices in BSS share a common base, uh, BSS ID. So here we have one. Uh, we will have one common uh, basic service set ID. Okay. In this, now we will see the rest of next. Uh, res next one is extended service set. In this. And ESS is simply a configuration of multi BSS used to handle roaming on wireless networks. It adds two new features to the wireless network. It enables users to move their mobile devices such as laptop, computer out outside of their home BSS while keeping their connection. So basically we use this only BSS. It also enables data to be forwarded from BSS to another through the network backbone. Next one is guys WEP, okay, which is wired equivalent uh, privacy. So what does it mean? It is very important to prevent evil dropping. I uh, 802.11 wired equivalent uh, privacy defines an algorithm that gives authorized authorized user the same level of security they would have if they were on by a network not protected by encryption so basically it is used for encryption and the WEP is an option available to an administrator to provide better security for wireless networks and WP WEP accounts for lost packet is self synchronizing and required later maintenance maintenance next one is so these are used for authentication now Wi-Fi protected access so Wi-Fi protected access again it is WPA is a Wi-Fi standard that was designed to improve upon security flaps of WEP there were certain drops drawbacks on this WEP so to remove those uh, this new was uh, developed which is which was known as Wi-Fi protected access the technology is designed to work with existing Wi-Fi product. Uh, so the technology is designed to work with existing uh, Wi-Fi product that have enabled with WEP, so that we do, we do not require to uh, you know change entire infrastructure or devices. It will increase your cost. Next one is guys Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is a wireless protocol that is used to communicate from one device to another device in a small area usually less than 30 feet because uh, Bluetooth uses 2.4 gigahertz spectrum to communicate a 1 Mbps connection between two devices for both 232 kbps voice channel and 768 kbps data channel so this is a Bluetooth device you can say you can connect and you can communicate with the devices but the distance should not be very long so guys in this video this much only and here I have finished uh, uh, lesson 5 and thanks for watching for this video if, uh, if you find uh, helpful please comment on this video like this video share this video and subscribe my youtube channel and this is the URL of my youtube channel and in next chapter or next video I will be talking about a network certification CompTIA volume 1 lesson 6 which is networking with I, uh, TCP IP in that again I will have uh, I think uh, five topics first one is a family of protocols the TCP IP protocol default IP addresses and custom IP addresses and next uh, next one is the TCP IP protocol source so if you subscribe the channel then definitely you will be getting the updated videos till then bye bye